So have a look at this recent study by pCloud. They looked at some of the most popular apps we use on a daily basis and compared their battery usage and memory consumption whilst in use and while sat quietly running in the background. Now you might think that the worst offenders for draining your phone's battery would be anything that streams video, so YouTube and apps that we use to make video calls. And whilst these types of apps do rank quite high, you can see that the worst offender by far is actually Fitbit, closely followed by Verizon, which strikes me as slightly crazy. You might also be surprised to see that Uber, Airbnb and Booking.com are all in the top 10. The reason why these apps consume so much of your battery is based on how many of your phone's features and functions they are using and also what they're doing when you're not using them, when they're just simply running in the background. So you can see that in order to use all of the features available in the Fitbit app, it needs access obviously to the internet and Bluetooth, but it also accesses your photos, contacts, location information, camera and microphone and file storage. And it's likely that the Fitbit app is checking a number of these connections throughout the day to maintain functionality, all the while chugging away on your battery. The other big offenders for battery consumption is anything that tracks your location, which is why we see Uber, Airbnb, Booking.com, Bumble and Tinder all rank very high. Then you have things like Amazon, Facebook and Instagram, all of which are very big apps doing lots of different things. Poor battery life is one of the biggest bugbears for many phone users, which is no surprise because whilst the performance of the processor improves with each new release of phone, allowing for more capable and demanding apps, the size of the battery in the phone isn't on the same increased trajectory. For example, the battery in the iPhone 13 Pro only increased by an extra 50 milliamp hours over the battery in the iPhone 11 Pro and the battery in the 12 Pro was actually smaller than the 11 Pro. Similarly, the battery in the Samsung Galaxy Ultra has been consistently the same for the last three iterations of phone. The same is true for storage. Whilst all the phones have generally seen an increase in their base level of storage, with the new iPhone range having a minimum of 128 gigs, the operating system and apps have also increased in size. The same pCloud survey looked at which apps consume the most amount of storage space on your phone. And you can see that the worst offenders by far are travel and taxi apps, with United Airlines requiring nearly half a gig of storage. So what can you do to improve your phone's battery life and recover some of that precious storage space? Well, first off, to improve the battery life, check which of your apps are the worst offenders. To do this, open settings and click on battery. I recommend switching from 24 hours to the last 10 days to give you a clearer indication. So for me, you can see that the worst offenders by far is my Optus Sports app, which is no surprise because it streams video. But where it gets really interesting is when you switch to activity by app. This will tell you how much time the app has spent running in the background. So now you can see that whilst I spent an hour and a half listening to Spotify, it spent nearly five hours running in the background, all the while chugging away on my battery. The same is true of the podcast app, an hour and 20 minutes listening time, but four hours spent running in the background. I recommend going through all of your apps and making a note of the worst offenders for background app usage. When finished, go back to the main settings screen, click on general, followed by background app refresh. And here, disable the option for all of the apps you feel don't need to be running in the background whilst you're not using them. Just be wary of disabling anything like email and chat messaging apps because these do need to run in the background to check for new messages. If you know that you won't be using your phone for a lengthy period of time, say overnight or during a meeting, consider putting it in low power mode, even whilst it's charging. Low power mode automatically enables features to reduce the amount of battery usage, such as reducing the display brightness and disabling automatic app updates and the background app refresh. It's also worth going through each app individually and seeing which of your phone's features the apps have access to, bearing in mind that the more things an app has access to, the more battery is going to be consuming. Again, you can do this by going into settings and scrolling all the way to the bottom of the screen until you see your list of apps. 
For example, if we look at Fitbit, obviously the app can't talk to the Fitbit watch without access to Bluetooth, and it probably needs location access too. Unfortunately, both of which are the worst offenders for battery consumption. However, does it really need access to my photos and music? Probably not. And whilst disabling access to music and photos isn't gonna do much for the battery, I'm sure you'll find other power hungry apps using location and tracking that can be disabled. In terms of storage, back in settings, click on general followed by storage. Here is a list of all the apps installed on your phone in order of size. You can quickly free up some space by getting rid of your recently deleted photos, which by default are held for 30 days after you delete them. But my recommendation is to go through all of your apps and offload the ones that you don't use frequently. By offloading the apps rather than deleting them, it ensures that your data and settings associated with the app are not deleted. For example, if you're not a frequent flyer, maybe consider offloading that United Airlines app until you next want to book a flight. And maybe consider sticking with one food delivery service and deleting or offloading the rest. Going through your apps in this way will one, free up space on your phone, but it also means that these offloaded apps are not gonna be running in the background, chewing up your battery. So that is how to prevent apps from draining your iPhone's battery and using up storage space. If you found the video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hitting subscribe for lots more useful tips and tricks. And you might also be interested in learning the easy way to stop all those annoying spam calls and the neat trick for reading articles blocked behind a paywall. Until next time, my name is Anthony. Thank you very much for watching.